Hey, hey, it's James Lessers bringing you the AFC North. AFC North has been the Steeler Nation for more than a decade. Yes, the Ravens will give a push here. The Bungles will give a push there. Maybe knock down the two for a year, but it's been Steeler Nation for years. And you got the Killer Bees, Big Ben, Antonio Brown, Le'Veon Bell. Man. And I guess technically Martavius Bryant, but he was apparently upset because Juju Schuster was getting more attention and all that. But maybe they trade him, maybe they cut him, I don't know. But as always, since it is the AFC North, it will be Steeler Nation winning it. Because that's what they do. They're the Steelers. They win it. The Ravens last year were kind of getting a little scary there with their defense. But their offense just... Has no weapons. They gave too much money to Joe Flacco, so they don't have any money for anyone else. And it's surprising. Like Big Ben won a couple Super Bowls, Joe Flacco won a Super Bowl, and yet Big Ben doesn't make as much money. As far as I know, I, I've not looked at the numbers, but I'm pretty sure he doesn't make as much money as Joe Flacco. But it could be very well be a kiss of Big Ben going. I like going to Super Bowl. I like winning Super Bowl rings. I know what I'll do. I'll make. No, $10 million less, so we can sign this guy instead. So we can go to another Super Bowl. Yay! They're the only team that threatened the Patriots last year for the number one seed. And they'll be the probably the only team that threatened them for the number one seed again. Unless the Broncos are going to make a push. But yeah, it's like... The Steelers had just been the end-all, be-all. Part of that is because they had a quarterback. They had Big Ben. So they were able to build other pieces around him. Unlike the Chargers with Phil Rivers, who had their quarterback and did nothing... The Steelers did something with their quarterback. They did something with the pieces that they could build off of because they had their quarterback. Speaking of having a quarterback, number two, because of their defense, I'm going to say the Ravens. The Ravens' defense saved that team last year from being a laughing stock. If it wasn't for that defense, they probably would have two, three, four fewer wins and never even been thinking about the playoffs. Playoffs? They can't be talking about playoffs. Ugh, they gave too much money to Joey Flacco. He's not that great a quarterback. But getting that Super Bowl win, that like that set him up for life. Like, eh, I won a Super Bowl. Give me all the money. Thank you. Oh, what's that? We're never going to see the playoffs again because you guys gave me all the money. What do I care? I got all the money. And he does have all the money. Which is hurts the rest of the team. Man, if he could have been like Big Ben going, I'll take 10 million less, but we'll be able to sign this wide receiver, so I actually had someone to throw the ball to. It's like, what do you have last year? Jeremy Macklin, I think, was his biggest weapon, and that was the reason why the Chiefs got rid of him. Uh, he's still a good wide receiver, but he's not a great wide receiver. They could have maybe gotten a great wide receiver if they had the money, but they don't. Like wide receiver Allen Robinson, who was a free agent, who's now going to the Bears because the Bears had the money. Man. Ravens, got to restructure that deal with Joey Flacco so you can get other players. <sighs> Terrible. But the number three. Ooh. The Bungles have Andy Dalton, A.J. Green, and... AJ Green and AJ Green and who else do they have on the team? Oh, they got AJ Green and that's it. They had Muhammad Sanu. They had uh fuck what's his name? That AJ Green, Muhammad Sanu, and Guy went to the Lions. Crap, that's gonna annoy the shit out of me. Anyways, but they had three wide receivers. Andy Dalton had weapons. You could throw to AJ Green, throw to Muhammad Sanu, throw it to the other guy. You could throw it to Tyler Eifert. And then Muhammad Sanu and the other guy left. They left. Giving him AJ Green. Oh, he saw Tyler. And Tyler's hurt again. And Tyler's hurt again. Nope, hurt again. Well, then he only has one weapon, AJ Green. The defense knows that. The run game with Giovanni Bernard, Jeremy Hill, just never got off the ground. They got stuffed every single time. 
So here we put three guys on AJ Green, the other eight guys in the box. We're good. He can't throw the ball to anyone else. Everyone else just drops it. The other wide receivers on the team's like, oh, he does the ball. Oh, no, no, I don't want the ball. Oh, God, don't let it touch me. And so AJ Green is the only player that he can throw to, which makes Andy Dolan look like a worse quarterback than what he is. Like, he's not. Look at his first couple of years. He was doing great at quarterback. And then he lost his weapons. He has no one else to throw to. And so is defense. No. Three guys on A.J. Green. Eight in the box. Their defense is stuffed. It's, it's going to stop the running game. They're going to stop the passing game. Like, there's nothing the Bungles can do now. <sighs> so, maybe they focus on wide receiver in the draft or in free agency. Like, if they could have gotten Allen Robinson, that would have been great for them, but then it happened. Ah, oh, man. Maybe they can get Carlos Hyde in the draft. I mean, in the free agency. Doubt it, but we'll have to wait and see. Ooh, Frank Gore. Frank Gore go to the Bungles. Although he's getting up there in age. If they focus on the O-line and the draft and free agency and get Frank Gore in free agency, maybe Frank Gore will be able to run the ball up the middle and all that. We'll have to wait and see. Anyways, but that leaves us to number four, the Browns. Saying 4-12. and 12, Which, of course, four more games than they won last year. They got Tyrod Taylor. They got Josh Gordon when he's not getting high. They got... Jarvis Landry. And with the first pick, they get that Saquon Barkley dude for running back, so now they have a run game. With all their other picks and cap space that they got, they can easily get a ton of mo Oh, who's the best defensive guys? Get those. Who's the best offensive lineman? Get those guys. Help Joe Thomas out. Hey, look at that. We have a team now. Yay! Ah, <sighs> like... The Bungles might finish, could you imagine finishing fourth in the AFC North because the Browns did better than you? Although I'm calling it now, the Browns do better than the Dolphins. Dolphins got rid of their best wide receiver, their best running back, one of the best defensive players. At this point, they're going to trade away the whole team for a 2027th round draft pick. I, I don't know what the hell they're thinking. I, I mean, yeah, no matter what, no matter how badly they do, they'll still have people show up and pay ticks and all that. But guess what? You get a player on your team, you sell their jersey, you make more money than people going, I'm not going to buy a jersey. They all suck. And look at the Browns. I mean, the Browns go 4-12, and maybe 5-11 and next year. They'll put more butts in the seats. They'll sell more jerseys. So imagine how many Barkley shirts they'll, jerseys they'll sell when Barkley runs up for 1,000 yards in the first six games, puts on an amazing first season and all that, just blows everyone out of the water, hopefully. So, yeah, I can see them making a push for the third seed in the AFC North. Dropping the Bungles down the fourth. Man. The, the Whoever the new... I can't remember the name of the new guy, but the new guy said, like, I'm a football guy. I'm not one of these, oh, I got money. I'm going to buy my position here. No, he's a football guy. He knows what he's doing. That's why he's wheeling and dealing all these draft picks and players to get a quarterback, to get a wide receiver, and hopefully to get a running back in, with the first pick. Get Barkley. Do it. Man, this could be an insane year for the AFC North. Steelers would still most likely win it, but two through four could be a wild competition. If the defense for the Ravens doesn't hold up, they could get let frog by someone else. If Andy Dolan can't get another weapon to throw to, he could get leapfrogged by the Browns. The Browns could leapfrog everyone, get you no know, six and ten. I mean, Hell. And technically, any given sudden, several of the games last year, they lost by less than a touchdown. They could have scored another touchdown. They could have won that game. So who knows? Maybe they'll finish 8-8. Eight and eight. I doubt it, but I say floor, 4-12, and 12, ceiling, 7-9. and nine For the Browns, anyways. But this is the building blocks of a new team. This is the building blocks of a very young team. A lot of these players aren't even old enough to rent a car. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens with the Browns. But yes, I'm calling it Steelers, Ravens, if they keep their defense together. If they can get Andy Dolan any more weapons, the Bungles, and then 4-12 to through 7-9, the Browns. The Browns. Ah, man. That'd be great for the Browns to get some wins. Put some butts in the seats. Make money. Then use that money to get more players. 
make more money, make a playoff push. Remember, the last time they won a playoff game was with anyone? Anyone? Bill Belichick. That's how long ago it was. Back in the mid-1990s was the last time they won a playoff game. But they do not have the longest drought. The longest drought is held by the Bungles. Bungles have been there, but they haven't won. I think it goes Bungles, Browns, uh, Lions are tied, I think, with the Browns for the longest playoff win drought. Gah. I mean, there's teams like, what do you mean we didn't make it to the playoffs? That's never happened before. They got other teams. Yay, we got a winning record. We finished 9-7. and seven. Woohoo. And then you get the Browns of, uh, we didn't even get a fucking win this year. <laughs> Man, the NFL is just weird like that, isn't it? Where some teams, and it's like, well, Cleveland, oh, that's cold. That's nasty weather. It's like, yeah, but so is New England. I know who's colder? The Green Bay Packers. And yet the Green Bay Packers have no issue drawing talent because they can win. It's like, all right, do I go to this team where it's going to be cold and miserable? And not ever see a win. Or to go to this team that's cold and miserable. But I'll have a playoff shot. Maybe you can get to the, to the Super Bowl. And of course, then it's like, well, Jacksonville and Miami and the Buccaneers. Like, why do they have a hard time drawing talent? They're in Florida. They have the beaches. They have the sunny weather. They have the Disney World and all that. It's like, how do they have issues drawing people? Because they can't win. God, Jacksonville's last year was like the first time they actually did anything. And then they signed Blake Bortles to a huge deal. Like, why? Why? Blake Bortles is garbage. You're going to regret this in the end, guys, when he throws, no, 22 interceptions next year. Anyways, all right, getting off on a tangent. So, what do you think? Do you think this could be the year that the Browns actually get four to seven wins? It'll be the first time in a long time. And as always, like, subscribe, comment down below, and have a wonderful day.